Hey kids, welcome to lesson six, user input and strings, part nine. Make it mad. Add the user text to your Mad Libs outline. Now that you have your Mad Libs outline appearing in the text area, it's time to incorporate the user's text to make your Mad Libs come alive. We have a do this. Did you pick good IDs for your text input elements? Hmm, I know I did, did you? Update them now. If you didn't, we don't have to worry about that because we've done that already. When the next button is clicked, get the user's text from the text input on screen one and store each in a separate variable. Using string concatenation to incorporate the user's text in your Mad Lib strings before updating the text area on screen two. We have some hints and should we make it local or global? I think we'll get into that and we can wait for the hints. I think we can figure this out together, kids. Let's go ahead and look at our code and see what we have to do. What we have to do here is we have to get on our initial screen these user inputs over to our Mad Lib screen. Well, how are we going to do that? I think we're going to have to use variables. So I'm going to come over here right after my play screen and I'm going to make a comment variables. And what kind of variables do I want? Well, I want a global variable. So I'm going to do variable and this one is called P noun input. So P noun input. So that variable is going to get the text of the user and that text is going to be p noun input. We got to spell that right there. We need a lowercase p. Really, we can name this whatever we want. So let's call this instead just p noun. So the variable now p noun is equal to getting, and it's not time, it is text. It's a good idea to pay attention to that. But this text here, this is something specific. So this needs to be in quotes. Remember from our first lesson, when we're using this variable, we need to have it in quotes when we're calling it. Don't forget your semicolon at the end. We have an error here because it's been defined, but we haven't called it yet. We can go ahead and take care of that right now in the bottom of our code. What we're going to look for is our, in our lib text, we're going to look for our plural noun, which is right here. So we're going to take this out. Now, if we just do plus P noun, that'll work. But don't forget to use your quotations. We want it written exactly like this prior to it. So we want number one, keep two in a space. We want whatever user input is P noun to be outputted right here. And then go back on to on the steering. So this should call it right there. And if you see our little yellow triangle disappeared, so that's pretty good. Let's continue doing this for all of them. So I'm going to do variable noun one. Now one is noun input one. So we're going to do the same thing equal get text. And this is again, noun input one. Don't forget your semicolon. We're going to do a variable noun two get oops that's a minus get text and we want this to be noun input two right there before we get too far ahead we have two errors right here it's telling me again it's defined but not called let's go down here and take care of that our first noun is here our second noun is there let's go ahead and do plus noun one 
But again, we need quotations to this because we want it to start and end. So right there, it is step on the comma, noun one, and then we go into the other variable to keep going. It looks like right here, this is on the outside. We want that to be on the other side of that. So we just erase that quotation mark. That looks pretty good there. Let's do the same thing here. Quotation plus noun two plus and then our quotation mark again. They're now both being called down here in our text area. Three down, two more to go. Isn't this fun? We're gonna do another variable, song, and this is going to be equal to get text. And this one is called song input. So song input. And our last one, finally, verb is going to be equal to get text and verb input. Last two there. Again, two more warning triangles defined but not called. That's because we have to come down here and work on those. So we have our song here. We're going to do our plus song plus again and our quotation mark i think we have an extra one here as well so we have to get rid of that and this is song right there and let's take care of our last one which is verb so i'm going to come over here oops plus verb, and then plus in our quotation marks right there. We have a confusing pluses. So that means we have an extra plus here somewhere. So if you look, I have a plus here and a plus there. We only need one, so let's just take one away. That should be pretty good for now. We have our variables up here. These are global variables. These are being called down here in our area. Our set text should be taking this string here and outputting it to our other screen. Let's test this out before we get too much further. We really should have tested this much earlier. Let's hit run. We have to go to our initial screen. It's probably a good idea to make sure we set our screen to always start on the Mad Lib screen. We are going to add test one, test two, test three, test four, and test five. When I hit next, I should see that text come up, but instead I should see test one, test two, test three, test four, and test five. Let's see if we're right. We hit next, hmm, nothing came up. Our test one, test two, test three, test four, test five did not show up. Let's take a look at our code here. Well, I have these variables out here. They're kind of out in the wild. Really doesn't have anything to do with anything. And really what I need these variables to be tied to is this next screen. So. What I really have to do is move my variables into the function. So instead of having them out in the wild up here, I took my next screen. So when the next screen button is clicked, these variables will be called and ultimately put over there. Let's see if this is the right approach. Let's hit reset, run, and let's do test one, test two, test three, test four, and test five, and see if our hypothesis is correct. We hit next, and here you go. We have test one, test two, test three, test four, and test five. I can see on my test two, to speed up. So if I go over here, 
I need a space right there. But other than that, all of my words came over. And it was just a simple error. My variables were not within my function. They were out in the wild. So you got to be careful. Make sure you know where you're working at as you are doing it. Looking back, we did our good IDs. When the next button is clicked, our inputs do come over there. And we use strings to put this all together. All in all, that looks pretty good. Our game is coming along here. Let's see if code.org wants anything else. Nope. Good job, kids. This is a lot of fun. Can't wait to see you on the next lesson.